What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be all about for loops and while loops in C Sharp and Visual Studio. So this is a continuation in the C Sharp tutorial series we've been doing on the channel and a super important concept in programming is using loops, looping functions that'll iterate numerous times so you don't have to run uh, the same piece of code a whole bunch of times and write the code over and over again. You can just call your loop to do something um, numerous times. And the two main types of loop are for loop and while loop, and we're going to get into both of them right here. So the one I want to start by talking about is actually going to be the while loop. And the main difference between a for loop and a while loop is a while loop, and you can maybe guess this from the name, but a while loop runs until a certain condition is met. So it's not preset how many times it's going to run. It's going to continue until the condition is met. So you say while some variable is under a certain value or while you know game over is false if you're building a game. Whereas a for loop, you define how many times it's going to run right up front. You say for like i in range 0 to 5. So you're saying, okay, I want it to execute exactly 5 times. And that's a for loop. So let's go ahead and do an example of a while loop real quick. I'm going to start by, um, and I have this just generic project set up. When you open up a new C Sharp uh, .NET console app in Visual Studio, this is pretty much what you get. And then I always throw a write line and a read line in. Um, so if you are super beginner and you need to understand how we got to here, I recommend you check out maybe the first C Sharp tutorial on the channel. Otherwise, we're going to get right into it. So I'm going to start by um, defining an index variable. So an index variable is just basically what we're going to use to keep track of where we're at in the loop. And for a for loop and a while loop, as you'll see in this video, you're going to want one of these. So we'll start by just saying it equal to zero. And then to is instantiate or start a while loop, it's just it's just the word while. And then inside of parentheses, you um, give your condition for what you want this loop to run during. So while, and we'll say index less than or equal to five, okay? And so what we just did is we created a new, I guess, kind of bucket of code where everything underneath this loop, everything inside of these curly brackets um, is going to happen anytime our index value is less than or equal to five. And so this is a super important concept for while loops. If you don't put any code inside of the while loop that's going to change the state of the index, and you don't have anywhere else in your program that's going to change the state of the index, you end up with what's called an infinite loop. And that's a pretty quick way to crash a processor if you don't put any safeguards in there. It's it, an infinite loop can't be processed. So if you start up a program and there's no way the index ever changes, um, then then uh, you're going to have problems. So just make sure kind of the first thing when you create a new while loop is you figure out what's going to get you out of the while loop. And so what we'll do is we'll say every time this while loop runs, we're just going to add one to it. And that's the plus plus. It's a little bit faster than doing um, index plus um, one. So <laughs> the plus plus operator, I talked about this a little bit in a previous video, but that's basically saying the same as index equals index plus one. Okay, so this is the same exact code as just writing index plus plus, but this is a little bit faster way of doing it, and it's great for while loops just incrementing at once. So you can see we're going to start with index of zero right here, and then every time the index runs, we're going to add one to it. So as soon as it gets to six, we'll be out of it. And all I'll do then um, inside of here is I'm going to take my console.write line, I'm going to move that in here, and I'm just going to write the index. So we should be able to see what this is doing now if we go ahead and run it. Um, and we should just get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the console. So let's go ahead and run it and see if I made any mistakes. There you go. And hopefully you can see we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, and then the index increment up to 6, and so we exited. So the while loop is great. Uh, if you want it to run while the index is less than or equal to 12 or whatever, you, you can just change it there. But the main piece of uh, 
of takeaway from here is a while loop will run forever until the index um, the indexer variable is met and so now let's go ahead and change this to a for loop and we'll talk about how that's kind of different a for loop is always going to have a fixed number of times that it's going to run um, so we'll just kind of modify around this so we can keep using some of what we've already got uh, but to create a for loop it's just for instead of while and then one thing that's pretty cool in a for loop you can actually um, initialize your v index variable inside of this for loop parentheses and you want to make sure you keep that semicolon um, that's still important you want to keep that in there but we'll say okay so in integer index is equal to zero and then the second thing you give it um, is the is the conditions just the same so it, for index equals to zero and then index is less than or equal to five so that's how many times we want to run it and then you also give it what you want to happen to the index every time it runs um, so this is saying okay initialize the variable we want it to run until it's uh, it, it's greater than five essentially so we want to run while index is less than or equal to five and then we want um, to add one to the index every time we go through it and so let me just run this and actually yeah, so one thing I didn't remove but you see we got 0 2 4 it looks like it's skipping a number that's because I left this index plus plus inside the loop you don't need this anymore when you create a for loop and you tell it what to do every time the index finishes um, you don't want to add a plus plus in there that's gonna make it skip over so there you can see we changed it and we get zero one two three four five um, so that's a super basic crash course on for and while loops if that's all you needed then um, you, you probably have what you need for this video I'll go ahead and show how this can be applied in like creating a power function um, and so like raising a number to an exponential using a loop and I'll give you an example of how that could work uh, for a um, for loop and for a while loop so since we have the for loop set up here let's just go ahead and start there um, and what we'll say is uh, we, for, so for this one we're gonna have to call a few variables before we get started um, because all we can initialize in the for loop instruction is the index value so we'll say whatever number it is that we want to raise it to and we'll we'll say right now we'll use the number four and then whatever the power is that we're going to raise it to so we'll say we want to do four to the third power um, and then let's make a variable that we're going to store the answer in so initially we'll set the answer variable equal to one because if the power function was like raise it to the zero power you'll see when we get into writing the loop but we would want it to just return a one so starting it at one um, is what we'll want to do and then we'll have the indexer start at one and we will say uh, so as long as the indexer is less than or equal to our power variable um, then we want to do what's what we're gonna put in here and let's go ahead and clean this up a little and what we want to do every loop then so this is saying okay so far the index hasn't multiplied the number um, up to the power function yet well we want to take that uh, answer and we want to multiply it um, times the number uh, do, 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 and then store it um, in the same variable the same answer variable and this times equals similarly to that plus plus operator is the same as saying answer is going to be equal to number times answer okay so these these are the same line of code uh, if, if you were to say the first time this ran your answer is equal to one so we're gonna come in and say okay now the answer is gonna be one times four and that would be if we had put in a power value of one but then the next time it runs answer is already a four so it's gonna come in and say answer is now equal to four times four so it'll be 16 it'll check if we've done the total number for the power yet um, and if not then uh, it'll do it again so just a shortcut of writing that is answer and then times equals number so it's basically saying multiply yourself times the number and store yourself in the same variable okay and then we don't have to do this index plus plus because we're in a for loop just like we talked about and then we will print 
the answer out. So uh, we'll do it every loop, even though what you'd really want from a power function is just at the very end, so you could move it out here. We'll do it every loop so you can see the function running. Okay, and you can see there we get 4, 16, 64 um, consecutively. So we get the power. Um, and if I were to change this to 4 to the 5th power, then that should be all we have to do to get it, yeah, to go up 4 to the 5th. So this is how you'd build like a super useful power function. Now, we did talk about the math methods um, that are built into C Sharp in the previous video. So there is a nice POW um, function already, but understanding how you get it is super useful too. So let's modify this um, so that we can do it in a while loop instead, and then we'll end this video. Um, so for the while loop like we talked about you need to have your index variable out here this needs to be while and then we need to put this index plus plus condition control x we want to put this index plus plus right in here because it's not built into the while anymore and let's see if that's all we had to do i don't all right, there we go. So uh, yeah, I wanted to make this kind of quick. I didn't want to keep you guys here all day, so I just um, didn't check through it real thoroughly. But there you can see um, it. for loops and while loops are somewhat interchangeable. There are definitely situations where one is going to make way more sense than another. If you're creating a game and you have like a game over condition, you would want to use a while loop and say, okay, do all of this active code anytime the game is not game over. But in a lot of mathematical situations, it can come down to what you prefer to write, how you prefer to write it. Um, but understanding the two situations, it'll usually feel pretty obvious which loop format to use. Um, I I like using for loops to generate arrays for like um, board sizes. Like if you were gonna create an array for tic-tac-toe or Sudoku or anything, you know exactly how large and how wide it needs to be. I usually use a for loop just because it's a fixed um, size, but you could do it with a while loop too. And that's what I've been trying to show in this video, how to understand for loops and while loops, how to use them both and how they're interchangeable. So if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, feel free to let me know about it in the comments below. Um, otherwise, thanks for checking out the channel. Be sure to leave a like if you found it useful. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out tons of other great tutorials there. And thanks for the support, and good luck with your code, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.